Oh, welcome back there, boys and girls. It's time for more lecture from school when you're not at school. And, oh, that's kind of a bummer, isn't it? Anyway, uh, just like before, got some sweet, sweet notes for you to fill out. You can uh, download them from the internet or just take normal notes like a normal class. Today, we're going to be diving into uh, two main processes of DNA, transcription and translation. Uh, this is crucial for our central dogma. So first, uh, down at the bottom, you can see our central dogma, and we'll do a quick review of the central dogma. First and foremost, uh, you got a section of DNA is used as a template to make some mRNA, right? And then that mRNA is used to make polypeptides, not not shown here, polypeptides. Then uh, the polypeptides are combined to make these proteins, and then the proteins are actually going to control your traits. So that's one uh, A through D right there. However, we do have a couple uh, new terms that we're going to be throwing in here. That's transcription and translation. So the whole uh, making mRNA using the DNA, that's called transcription. That's 2A. And then making uh, polypeptides, right, or proteins, out of that mRNA, that's called translation. Make sure you uh, get the central dogma down and get those terms put in where they go. We're going to start by talking about transcription. So transcription, uh, we're going to be looking here because transcription, the first arrow, DNA to mRNA, transcription occurs here within the nucleus of the cell. So we're going to start by looking inside the nucleus of the cell, right? So it occurs in the nucleus. Transcription occurs within the nucleus. And the process is performed by enzymes in the nucleus. They have names. You don't need to know them. You'll learn them later when you take AP Biology. But it's, it's, it's RNA polymerase for those of you who really have dying to know. So during transcription, a segment of DNA called a gene is read or used as a template. While the DNA is read, the mRNA uh, code is being produced. So here we have the DNA. Remember, it's double strand, so first we need to unzip it. Then we get the enzymes and the machinery hops on there. We're gonna make some sweet, sweet mRNA. How does it know uh, what to do? Well, it's going to use the, the base pairing rules that we used before. Remember, mRNA, so there, there's no T in the mRNA down here. But anytime in the DNA you had an A, that would pair with a U in the mRNA. If there's a T in the DNA, uh, there's still A in mRNA, so T will still pair with A. C would still pair with G. So we have our same base pairing rules uh, that go on. And then, because mRNA is single-stranded, it's going to leave the nucleus. It's single-stranded, so it's small enough to leave the nucleus. See, here it is leaving the nucleus right there. And then it'll, go, it'll be outside the nucleus just in time for translation. Translation occurs outside of the nucleus, right? So we're going to zoom in down here on outside the nucleus. It's performed by a ribosome. Now, if you look closely, here's our mRNA strand. Here's some other stuff happening, but there's like this little grayish circle. There it is. That's our friend, the ribosome. That's our friend, the ribosome. Did I mention that I um, should have flipped the page by now if you're on the guided notes? So translation occurs outside the nucleus, uh, either in the cytoplasm, which is what we're showing here, or on the rough ER, remember the rough ER also has uh, ribosomes all over it. And the process, like we just said, performed by a ribosome. Those are from the ribosome right there. So the mRNA gets read by the, the ribosome. So the ribosome reads the mRNA to know like what order of the amino acids. The little fellers here, the tRNA tRNA is going to transfer the amino acids to the ribosome. So see, here's our little amino acids. There they are. Get transferred to the ribosome. The ribosome is going to match the mRNA codon with a tRNA anticodon using those same base pairing rules we just talked about on the previous screen, except obviously there, there's no T in either RNA this time. So here you see that the mRNA is getting paired up with the tRNA, the mRNA has codons, the tRNA has anticodons. You'll see more on that in a, a next slide. But the mRNA is matched to the tRNA using my friend of yours, the ribosome. And then the ribosome is actually gonna, gonna remove the amino acid here. So it's gonna take the amino acid off and it's going to add it 
to uh, the from the tRNA and connect them to form a polypeptide. So the ribosome removes the amino acid from the tRNA and use it to form the polypeptide, which is this chain of amino acids right here, right? That amino acid chain that's called a polypeptide. And then, like we talked about before, the polypeptides will combine together to form a protein, and the proteins will control your traits. Here's a closer up of that whole base pairing process. This is the tRNA right here. Here is the mRNA. You'll notice mRNA in groups of three, one, two, three. That's called a codon. And then down here, the tRNA has the corresponding base pairs. C goes with G, A goes with U, A goes with U, right? So this anticodon from the tRNA will match up with the codon from the mRNA. The other end of the tRNA has this sweet, sweet amino acid on it. The ribosome is going to be removing this and adding it to the end of the chain. P.S., special type of covalent bond here called a peptide bond. That's why it's called a polypeptide because it has many peptides in it. And then here you can see the next tRNA with its anticodon ready to bind with the next mRNA codon. We're going to get that sweet, sweet amino acid next. The, only the, the proper base pairing will fit, and so the ribosome just sort of has to muddle through until it meets the right thing. What's great about this, and here's the, the same thing, right? You got your tRNA anticodon with a three pointing down. mRNA codon, that's down here. You see the amino acid on the other end. Here we are attaching them, forming that polypeptide. But you'll notice we've got one strand of mRNA down here and one, two, three ribosomes on it working. So this is the, the good part of this system, the whole like complicated, got to go through transcription to make the t mRNA before you can do translation, is that we've got this string of mRNA out there with the ribosomes. We can just pile a whole bunch of ribosomes all up on it and really, really crank out some proteins. Now, in order for you to do translation, you need to know how to use this sweet, sweet codon chart right here. Luckily for you, I have it right here for you. Uh, you can download it, or if you picked up the papers, you've got this uh, stapled with your sweet, sweet notes. There's two. You've got the, uh, the table here. You also have the circle. Most people like the circle. However, I've seen them throw uh, the table at you sometimes, too, so you really do need to know how to do both. Let's say, uh, just for the sake of saying, that we are going to use the same two mRNA codons and we're going to go through the chart here together. It's super easy. A, U, G, and um, let's do a U, A, C. That sounds good. How the table works, the first letter is, is on the first one, right? So the first letter here is A. We find the A. So we're somewhere in this column right in, right in here with the A's. And I know some of you have already found it. Just, just go with me here. The second letter is U. So you come to the top. You find, so we're in this row for the A's, we're in this column for the U's, and then the third letter is AUG, and so we just find it here in this box, there it is, AUG. So what this table is telling us is that the mRNA codon AUG, when it goes through translation, that's going to use, uh, tell the ribosome to put methionine, or MET, the very first amino acid. It's also the start codon, so it's super important, it's one of the only codons that you will need to memorize, AUG methionine or methionine, the start codon. It's always the first part of every polypeptide. Now it'll be in there other place too because it's, it's also a building block. Anyway, on the next one. So the first one here, we had a UAC. So first one, we find the U, we're in the top row, we're in the top row. Second letter is A, so we follow the top row over, second letter A, and then we scroll through, we find AUC, and we've got tear, which, unless I'm mistaken, is for tyrosine. There it is. You'll notice UAC and UAU both code for that same one. This is, a, this is a thing we call the wobble effect, and we'll get more into it a little bit later. You'll notice there's also some stop codons. More on that in your next activity. That's how you use the table. This one, we're going to do the same thing. AUG and UAC, so we can see, uh, you know, if we did it right, because we already found the answers before. This one's super easy. You just start in the middle, work your way out. First letter's an A, so we're going to start right here, A. Second letter's a U, come out to U. Third letter's a G, bloop, there's the G. Methionine or methionine again. A plus for us. 
Let's do UAC. So the first letter is a U. Second letter is an A, so we're going to move out to A. Third letter is a C, so we're on U, A, C. There it is. Uh, tyrosine. Yeah, I was right. Tyrosine. Very good. And you'll notice that it's got two glumped together, showing us again the wobble effect. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to holler. But that's all the lecture. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Nice job. I miss you horribly. Not school school is weird, and I hate it. Rattle, rattle, thunder, crattle, boom, boom, boom.